When a new charter school opened in 1980, there were 890 students enrolled. Using function notation, we had a formula representing the number n of students attending this charter school t years after 1980, assuming the student population increases or decreases as described here. Notice a and b increase or decrease by a constant amount, and c, d, and e increase or decrease by a constant percentage. So if the student population increases or decreases by a constant amount, we can model the student population using a linear function in this form here, where the slope m would represent the change in outputs divided by the change in inputs, or in this case, the change in the population amount per year. And b, the vertical intercept, which would be the point zero comma b, would be the starting population or the student population at time t equals zero, which in this case is the population in 1980. And if the student population increases or decreases by a constant percentage, we can model the student population using an exponential function in this form here, where a is the initial value or starting population at time t equals zero, and b is the growth factor or decay factor, where if the student population is increasing by a certain percentage, the growth factor is one plus r, where r is the percent of growth expressed as a decimal. And if the student population is decreasing by a certain percentage year, b is a decay factor equal to one minus r, where r is a percent of decrease per year. So because a and b are increasing or decreasing by a constant amount per year, we can model the student population using a linear function in this form here. And because C, D, and E are increasing or decreasing by a constant percent per year, we can model the student population using an exponential function. So starting at A, because the student population is increasing 46 students per year, that means M, the slope of our linear function is 46. And remember the starting population in 1980 was 890, which means the vertical intercept B is equal to 890. So the linear function would be n of t equals 46t plus 890. Part b is decreasing by 40 students per year. Still linear function, but now m, the change in the student population per year, would be negative 40, again because it's decreasing, and the starting population b is still 890. So our linear function would be n of t equals negative 40t plus 890. Now the next three are modeled using exponential growth or decay because the population is increasing or decreasing by a constant percentage. For an exponential function, a is the initial value or starting population, which again is 890. And here because it's decreasing 7.1% per year, b is our decay factor, where b is equal to one minus the percent of decrease per year expresses a decimal. 7.1% of the decimal is 0.071, so b is equal to 0.929, which means the exponential function n of t equals 890 times 0.929 raised to the power of t. Next, the population increases by 17% per year so we have exponential growth. A, the starting population is still 890. B, the growth factor is going to be equal to one plus the percent of growth per year expresses a decimal, which is 0 0.17. So our base B equals 1.17. So the exponential growth function, N of T equals 890 times 1.17 raised to the power of T. E is very similar. It's increasing by 8.6% per year, so A equals 890. B, the growth factor, because we have a percent of growth per year, is one plus 8.6% expressed as a decimal, which would be 0 0.086, so the base B is 1.086. So N of T equals 890 times 1.086 raised to the power of t. And now for the last example, 
the student population remains constant or doesn't that change and therefore our function that models the student population will be a constant function n of t equals a where a again is the starting student population. So if the student population doesn't change for any value of t, n of t equals 890. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.